Yeah. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're team Waste Not. Uh, I'm Sean. Tommy. Ryan. Yeah, I'm Shuyo. Okay. So we're tackling the food waste problem. We all know that we waste a lot of food. Uh, and New York City alone, every year we waste half a million tons of food. And to put that into a visual effect, that fuels 100 subway cars per day. And that's a lot of food that we're wasting. A lot of it is because uh, restaurants, they buy more food than they actually need uh, because they don't really know how much they're going to consume uh, for a lack of insights on the market. So our solution is to um, design an application that predicts the inventory needs based on real-time data. So let me show you real quick what we designed. So say I'm a restaurant owner, and this is our inventory. We have cheese, lettuce, ground beef, and this is how much I have in stock right now. And this is what it predicts uh, next week, what I'm going to use. So next week, next uh, Tuesday, it's going to rain a lot. So less people are going to come to my restaurant. That's why I'm buying 30 pounds of cheese instead of 40 pounds. And in the order history, you can see how much food I have consumed. And how do we get this data is from pulling uh, data like weather, season, neighborhood, transportation. Um, and also we can customize what kind of data is impacting my restaurant consumption. Cool. So, uh, you know, here are two of the graphs that, you know, you saw in the previous slide. Um, so I guess the real question we should really answer right now is where are we getting our data? So uh, we consider bringing into an Applebee's and stealing all their data, but that's <laughs> illegal. So we decided to uh, create a simulation over two years. Um, so this is kind of data that we, uh, this is a simulation that we ran, and as you can tell, we have a restaurant that you know likes to eat salad, burgers, and pizza. And we purposely uh, made it so at spe like specific moments, like certain like foods are more popular. Like we have a lot of pizza eaters and not a lot of salad eaters. I wonder why. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we took that data and we integrated it with uh, real-time data, like you know weather data, seasonal data, and. Uh, market trends, and we uh, piped it into a uh, machine learning algorithm, and this is a representation of like what our kind of algorithm came up with. This is our kind of projections for the uh, ingredients for the next like six months, uh, and this is all the uh, ingredients that are uh, that are you know, shared between all the food items. Um, so yeah, uh, another thing I wanted to sh quick show real quick was uh, well, that's. Not good. Oh, okay. So, cool. So this is a representation of you know some of our data points. Uh, even though the theme is food, the real value of our product is the fact that we're pulling in from different data sets. So, like, what you see there is an aggregation of three different uh, you know data sources. The only thing that we really kind of generated was the last key, which is food. Uh, that's kind of the real value of like uh, our you know, RESTful APIs. Uh, it's very easy to add and update new keys and you know, be able to integrate new data. So. Cool, yeah. So for all of you machine learning nerds, if you want to know the detail of our approach, uh, this is this simple linear regression thing we wrote, uh, very standard scikit-learn. So <coughs> we didn't do any work. The data you saw was actually, actually predicted from the simulated data. And back to the design we have um, on this page, you can see we're using linear actually for the node section. Uh, it's very easy to find correlations between features and our data. And we have planned to add on in like nonlinear methods like neural nets or SVMs to actually tell you how much you should purchase. And also we want to use PCA for confidence. Thank you. So the tech that you guys are hoping to build is, is pretty cool. Um, just to clarify, your target customer in this regard are the restaurants, right? Yes, restaurants, managers, and yeah, grocery stores maybe. Um, I've, I haven't worked in a restaurant in a really long time, so you know, take this with a grain of salt, but I watch a lot of Chef's Table. And uh, it, I'm just curious what you think the incentives are for the restaurants to actually start using the product. Um, and if you've thought about like, like onboarding and, and how ultimately you, you get them to use this because a restaurant strikes me as like a really, really hectic place and throwing in another thing that you need to keep track of uh, sounds like a, a, you know, it's, it's a big thing to ask. 
Right, so our thought is we have this uh, sort of like clarified generalized model. We take a lot of data, just find it randomly. And, but our main market would be working with the res restaurant owner about their own data. Training, uh, we, we can train them with a badge or a statistic, which is online, adaptable, which is good. And uh, the data and algorithm will adapt uh, while the day, you know, go through. And uh, maybe they have happy hours or something like that. We throw that kind of data in there or pull hashtags from Twitter, like see what's the trending. Um, but yeah, they can save money by smart, uh, being smarter and managing their supply. So Yeah, if you can demonstrate that you're saving them time and money, then that's great. But if it's another thing that they have to babysit, they're not going to do it. Right. So a lot of this automated, uh, when the customer is making an order, it will go directly into the system and tells them how much is being consumed. Uh, and then the data is also automatically uh, being integrated with their own data. Um, so, so again, uh, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build off of the, the comments uh, just given previously, it is important to, to get user input on, on these sorts of things. Like, for example, there might be a restaurant where rain is good for the restaurant because it's an indoor mall or something, so they get more people coming in. So you're going to need to think about that aspect of training when you're putting in, when you're doing that kind of input for people. So you have to ask them how many people were in your restaurant today. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that kind of little bit of feedback as well. Um, for example, we have an update here. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. It trains the, the system like what's being consumed. So the, the, the system will know like uh, is my guess correct or not? Mm -hmm, and that's mm -hmm. why we also have a, uh, a confidence score. And, well, and, and, it's, and you're going to want to make sure that like the system is basically figuring out like, oh yeah, the rain is correlating effect right in that. So, um, so I love that. That's great. And, and, and again, like echoing sort of like your, your return on investment is you're saving them time and money. So if you can predict how many customers I'm going to have tomorrow, I'm not going to have to buy as many supplies, and that's a, that saves me money. Um, so yeah, I love this. I love this product. I think it's a great, uh, a real, a real potential market. It's basically QuickBooks for meal preparation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so a couple thoughts. I was uh, talking about updating your assumptions based on input. Um, I'd, I'd love to see you guys look forward, and this is my own shameless plug for NOAA products, is, is look forward for weather forecasting in the future and say, so you could have a, a more adaptable um, forecast going forward as the forecast changes. So um, I would just make sure there's regular updates in that. This, this is totally expandable to inventory management for restaurants, which is a nightmare, by the way. That's incredibly resource intensive for restaurant managers. At least it was at the Applebee's that I worked at in South Carolina. Um, and so uh, look at adding um, more than just food. Look at adding uh, alcohol resources. Look at adding, um, you, you know, the bags of, of for soda, um, and and like you said, the, I love the QuickBooks analogy for restaurants because um, that that will truly make this one less thing that to think about at the end of the night when they're closing out, rolling silverware, or doing all the side work. Um, this has a really really valuable real world potential, um, and I'd love to see you guys keep building on that. I just have a quick comment. You know, when we go to restaurants and typically you get your uh, bills at the end of the night, it actually is itemized. So a lot of this information in terms of what dish is being ordered is probably already stored. So if you have like a connection to a restaurant owner who is willing to trust you with their information systems, it would be great to kind of do like a, a prototype with them because, I mean, gosh, all of this information should already be there somewhere for them. So this is a fabulous way to exploit that data to something that could save m money and be you know good for the environment and yep. all that good stuff. Uh, on that point, you know, you can probably integrate with point of sale services, right, and platforms, um, and that saves you guys a lot of that work because you're not necessarily having to tailor it to a given restaurant. You're tailoring it to a platform that many restaurants are already using. Exactly. Well, what was it called? Uh, just any any point of sale service, right? So if if they're using, you know, if they're using Square or whatever, right? You know, like you can you can tap into that. Yeah. So obviously that would need to be a little. Uh, you guys would have to be able to adjust that because you know if a burger place is going to sell more burgers and that might have less impact from weather so um but yeah i love tapping on the, P the pos system um it's just a way of easily getting itemized yeah. results yeah and there, there's a bunch of standardized ones that aloha is a great example that restaurants use all across the country so you could right. get some really really great general data mm -hmm. and then go in and, to build some basic assumptions and then go in and get some more detailed data that helps tailor to the individual restaurant so um, that, that's why we have the setting session. You can check uh, which data you want to pull in. So yeah. everyone has different kind of settings. It's yeah. fully customized. 
Yeah, so um, obviously you can tell we're excited about this because I, I think we all see that there's a really great long-term really real-world cool. potential here. A lot of different ways you can go. Yeah. And just one other thing. Um, so there's the, the Food Plus Tech uh, meetup here in the city. So there's a lot of, and for, this goes for everyone who had any kind of like food or, or food waste related product. There's a lot of investment opportunities that are available now for people to actually develop products like this. So just take a look at Food Plus Tech. Uh, just search for it online, you'll find it. Thank you.